welcome to Inspirational Corner. I am your host, Katura. Today on the broadcast, we'll be talking about Kingdom Authority Part 2. And the subject of focus will be exercising the authority. But you know what I like to do in Proverbs 3 and 6? He says, in all of your ways, acknowledge God and that he will direct and lead you in a plain path. So, dear Heavenly Father, I want to do just that. I want to invite you, Holy Spirit, to be the speaker and be the teacher. Bring to my remembrance, Lord, everything it is that you have taught me. Bring on the pe preacher and bring on the teacher in the name of God. Jesus. Well, I hope you are getting an enjoyment out of this series I'm doing on Kingdom Authority. For those of you who were not able to listen in on last week, I'm just going to do a brief review and then we have to move forward in the lesson because I've got a lot of material that I need to cover. We looked at Ephesians uh, 6 and 10 on last week briefly. We looked at Luke chapter let me take a look Luke chapter 10 and 19 where the Lord Jesus was telling his disciples lo I give unto you power and the word power in the Greek translation is translated authority and so we looked at uh, Ephesians 1 and 20 and we looked at Ephesians 2 and 1 and we went over the events that unfolded when Christ quickened us and raised us up and set us in heavenly places at the right hand of the Father with Christ Jesus. And so that's just a, a, a caption of some of the uh, turn of events that we discussed in last week's lesson. Now, in this week's lesson, I want to pick up with part two of kingdom authority the subject is the authority actor exercising the authority of the believer and we will look at the armor in the book of Ephesians all nine pieces of the armor and I want you to approach this from the perspective of knowing that these pieces of armor represent the attitude that the believer should put on. It's um, written in um, like a parable form to help you to remember, but what it really is, is the attitude. And I know we have read this scripture over and over and over. We read Ephesians chapter uh, 6, verses 10 through 19 multiple times, but I submit to you, you cannot exhaust the word of God, and you cannot exhaust this portion of scripture that I'm teaching on today. So don't feel like I've heard that before. I've heard that and 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 tune me out. Be selective in your hearing. Make it an act of your will to listen intently to what I have to share with you about these nine pieces of armor. And then you will uh, embrace the attitude of these pieces of armor in your daily Christian life. And I, I put that out there that way because we have a tendency to forget. And so if I can do something in my teaching and this lesson to help you to remember so that you won't um, go back to the old way of doing things when it comes to Christendom, if you can realize I need to put these things on just a little bit more and I can do that by exercising my attitude in the area of the authority of the believer. And so we'll start our reading in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 and in verse 10 and while you're going there I just wanted to say that you know the uh, the uh, the authority that the believer walks in is no greater than the authority that is behind your authority. So you have backup, you have support, and the 
hardest part is exercising it, is doing it, and getting the results off of your own faith. It's not easy, but it is possible, and you can do it. And I, I say that because this is where I believe myself and other members of the body of Christ have missed it. We have a tendency to look to others for the things that we need. We have a tendency to lean on others, and we've got to pull away from that mentality. And through exercising your authority, it will become easier for you. It's, a, it's an attitude, and you've got to be proactive. And so I'm going to stop rattling now. You know where I'm going in with the text here. And um, first of all, I want you to know that uh, all of these parts of armor are given to you to put you over. But you've got to remember to use them at the appropriate time. And that's why I feel like my teaching this uh, study on the armor can't be exhausted. So if you open your Bibles, you should be there now to Ephesians 6 and 10, and we're going to read it, and then I'll talk about it. Now, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take you the whole armor that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loin skirt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel, of peace and above all things take the shield of faith wherewith you are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit watching whereunto with all perseverance and supplication for the saints for and so and in verse 19, Paul goes on to request that they pray for him also that he may have utterance to be given unto him that he can speak the word with boldness. Now, I want to take a minute. I hope you have your pen and pad out because we want to look at each piece of armor that we just read about in the scripture. Now, Paul has given them a written directive that they are to take this armor on, and this is how they are to conduct themselves when they uh, embrace the armor. Now, each piece of armor, as I said, is symbolic of the attitude that the believer must walk in, okay? And so now the first piece of armor we see that it was the girdle of truth. Now, the girdle of truth is simply the believer embracing and striving to have a clear understanding of the word of God. First and foremost on the list is you've got to have the word. You can't operate effectively with your weapons of warfare if your understanding of the word is not clear. And so I uh, 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 encourage repetitive listening and teaching on subjects like this because you don't get it all the first time and all the second time. Even the seasoned saints, it's good to embrace what I'm teaching here today because you will pick up something out of this lesson. So first of all, embrace the word of God. Uh, the, it is the girdle. Now, you know, a girdle is something that holds everything together. It sucks in the fat. It adds shape and, and, def and definition uh, to a, a physical body. You know, it pulls the bulges in and it just makes everything look good. Well, the word will make you look good when you put it on and begin 
to exercise it. And so now uh, the second thing we want to look at is the breastplate. Now there are two things that's going on with this breastplate of righteousness. And the first thing is when you put on the breastplate of righteousness, it's a symbolic act of embracing Jesus. Jesus is our righteousness. He has become sin that we could, who, who, who knew no sin. He became our righteousness rather. And also we put him on and our act of obedience, our act of obedience to the word of God. So there are two things that goes with the breastplate of righteousness. We put on Jesus. He becomes our righteousness because he, 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 we, he knew no sin, but he became sin that we might be made the righteousness of God that is in Christ Jesus. And then the second thing associated with the breastplate of righteousness that the believer must embrace, and that is activation. That is his active efforts of obedience. Those are the two things that goes with the breastplate plate of righteousness. Put on Jesus and then activate your obedience. Start walking in the dominion that he has secured for you on the cross. When And um, the third armor is defeat. He, the believer, uh, uh, must have his feet shod with the preparation of of the gospel of peace. And when I was doing my study and looking at this, I noticed I said, preparation. Preparation is everything. And I and I looked at that. He said, your feet must be prepared. So we, we got on the truth. We have on our uh, girdle. And now we've got to be prepared. We have to have knowledge um the gospel of peace and this is we gotta be faithful in the word back to point number one we started with the word and now we're back here with being prepared with the word we have understanding then we put on our breastplate and now we have a preparation of the gospel of peace so there is some uh preparing that you need to do. And I want to draw your attention to that as the uh, exercising of the uh, authority of the believer is developing in your Christian life. And so the next, the fifth armor, the fourth armor is the shield of faith. Now, the shield of faith is that armor that covers the body and the head area. It is indicated, uh, it is indicating safety under the blood of Jesus. Now I'll read that again to you. The shield of faith is the covering for the for the body and the head area. It is an indication that the believer is protected under the blood of Jesus. And that's what the shield of faith for. And we, when we put up the shield of faith, you know, we, we know that we're covered by the blood. We're completely safe and under complete health and protection by the shield of faith. That's what a shield does. It protects you. It makes you feel protected. It, it warts off unwanted elements. The helmet of salvation. In the book of 1 Thessalonians 5 and 3, we see that the hope of salvation is associated with the helmet. The hope is the only helmet able to protect the body area. It is the, sorry, it's the only element that is able to protect the head area. I got my, I got my breastplate and my helmet kind of screwed up there, but the helmet of salvation, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 8, he, uh, the hope of salvation is the only 
helmet able to protect the head area in these days of turning away from the truth. You got to keep your head on straight. A lot of things are coming forth in the world today and it's distracting and you can easily become dismayed and get your mind off of, of any hope for our future ever being uh, possible. You know, things can look pretty grim as they do now. And but, but keep on the helmet of salvation. Keep your hope in God. Keep your hope right. Keep your head protected. Remember these at these nine pieces of armor are the attitude, are symbols of the attitude of the believer. And I said to you when opening, you we are focusing on exercising our authority and walking it out. We embrace the victory and by obtaining what we want using our own faith. The sword of the spirit. Now this is the part of the armor that is offensive or defensive rather. This is the part of the armor that is active. The sword of the spirit is to be used. It's, it's in um, a sense, it's, it's the other um Let's see, it's the other armor part that are defensive weapons. All of the other armor parts are the, the defensive weapons. Now, the sword of the spirit is the offensive weapons. And I, I wanted to read that from my notes because I want to make sure that I give it to you just the way I, it was given to me in my study time. So the other pieces of armor that we have just looked at are the defensive armors. That's the attitude of the believer that you use to defend yourself. Now the sword of the spirit is very active and it's, a, it's, it's motion, it's alive and it's, and it's movement and it's, it's, it's offensive. <coughs> Not offensive, I meant it is uh, the offensive weapon. And now um, number seven, we look at prayer as we read through Ephesians 6, 10 through 19. I noticed that prayer was at the bottom of the list. And I looked at that and I said, wow, Lord, prayer is at the bottom. And in my world, you know, prayer has always been the first thing. I always have been under the conception that prayer was to always be first. But when Paul organized his thought and in this written directive to the believer, I noticed he said that the word was first and I'm looking and I'm seeing that the word of the prayer is at the bottom of the list. Now, you know, a lot of us are experiencing hardships coming under attack and failures because of the sin of prayerlessness. And I'm not preaching at you, I'm sharing with you because I've been there and this is why I can talk on what I am sharing with you today. We've got to exercise caution in this area because it's easy to lapse over into flesh. It's easy to lean to self. It's easy to look to others and so we want to make an extra effort to guard our prayer life and in my notes I have here that prayer is a fight it's an it's the armor that you put on when you're getting ready to go into that spiritual fight prayer is work Paul said in Corinthians, he told the Corinthians church, I have labored in prayer until I have travailed you in to birth. And this is why I have always felt that prayer had to be first because prayer is where you birth 
out what you see operating in your life in the earth. Prayer is where you birth out the authority of the believer that you will embrace in and walk it out in the earth. Prayer is the tool, is the vehicle whereby you will have faith, whereby you will be able to obtain your desires on your own faith. Remember, I opened up talking to you, saying to you, we want to exercise the faith of the authority of the believer so that we can start to get things on our own, get things with your own faith, not look into someone else, but get it on your own. And so it's, uh, you exercise your will to do this. That's an attitude. You make up your mind. You say, okay, that's it. This is how this is going to go down. And you start going after it with prayer to get your breakthrough in that area. And then while you are praying and then you are living it out, your life on a daily basis, things will come that will look hard and that will look like your faith is not working. It will look like you're not breaking through or breaking ground. And so that's why I took extra time to talk about each one of these prayer armor pieces for you to be able to be strengthened in your faith so that you can obtain what it is that you are believing for. Remember, the title of the lesson is Kingdom Authority, and authority is upheld and undergirded by faith. And let me tell you something. It's not always an easy task, and that's why I wanted to talk about these nine pieces of armor to empower your faith to know that faith is not just some little tiptoe through the tulips or cake walk you've got to be strong you've got to hold on you've got to persevere when it's hard you got to know that i have prayed about this thing i got the word of god on this thing he has promised this thing and then you got to do what he just said for us to do here in ephesians stand fast having done all to stand stand let me tell you that takes backbone that takes grit that takes some tenacity that takes bulldog faith and sticking to itness and it's not easy but it's worth it and it will develop your character your personality and it, it, it is just strengthen you through exercising this attitude demonstrated in these nine pieces of armor. Many of the believers, we, we have just unconsciously yielded to hell. You know, we have just unconsciously released our hold on our authority. And we've unconsciously given place to hell you know but the bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you that word resist means fight back you gotta fight back you gotta press back and i i feel what i'm sharing with you because we have new believers coming into the body of christ every day and you become overwhelmed by the cares of this life. They get in and they choke the spirit and you lose track. You lose sight of your direction. And that's why I spend a little extra time talking about the helmet because the helmet is that part that covers your thinking. You keep on hope. You keep that on your head. You keep hope in your head to keep your thinking covered so that you don't slip and faint and fall in your believing. And so then we see that in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, God has not given us the spirit of fear, 
but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And I, I don't mind giving my testimony and letting you read my mail. You know, I tell you this all the time. When you, you give your testimony, it's the most greatest witnessing tool that there is. And I tell you, fear was one of my battles. I battled fear like none other. I tell you, fear almost destroyed my every effort. Fear. They say that public speaking is the number one most dreaded, feared uh, profession in the world. And if that's not true, I don't know what is. Fear is paralyzing. Fear will sabotage. Fear brings with it many spirits. And I, I tell you, I have to resist it daily, the fear of men. I have to resist that. I have to resist fear from operating in my life in any area. Why? Because I have authority over fear. I know that I do. And that's one area where I have to work hard to keep hell under my feet, to exercise my dominion and control over fear because it'll, it'll just destroy you. It'll destroy all your work. And so you want to fight back. That's what it means to resist him. And so it's your responsibility to exercise your authority over the powers of darkness, principalities, powers, the rulers of this world, etc. It's your responsibility to pick up these weapons and work them and get the results using your own faith. That's your job. In Matthew 18 and 19, he says, whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. In one translation, it says, whatsoever that you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. So is your, the responsibility rest on you. The ball is back in your part. And in conclusion, I want to say, you know, at all costs, avoid going around trying to control other people. That's not given unto us to do. The authority of the believer is over things, not people. We can't rule and dominate another person's home. We don't have the authority to dominate other people. And I needed to get this in as we close the lesson because it is a big problem in the world. We see so much power struggle. We see so many after power, after control, when in fact, God gave us dominion over the fish and the sea and all of the creeping things on the earth, the animals and the land. He made all of us human beings to have dominion over things and creeping things and the, and the fowls of the air and the, and, and, and the elements. We have dominion over those things. But the, the problem that's going on is we want to exercise dominion over one another. And it's not working because he didn't authorize us to have dominion over another human being. We are all free moral agents. We all have the right to choose and so you can't force a person against their will it it won't work jesus didn't do it he gave us a free will and that's that's why he told us to choose you this day whom you will serve choose life he says in the book of deuteronomy the choice is up to you so I thank you for being a part of Inspirational Ministries. And you know what I always like to remind you of in 1 Peter 5 and 7 from the Amplified Bible. God cares about you affectionately and he cares about you watchfully. Mm -hmm.